The Fiero was the first two-seater Pontiac since the 1926 to 1938 coupes and the first mass-produced mid-engine sports car by U.S. manufacturer. When the Fiero's 84 model was introduced, it played a major role in building the excitement image for the Pontiac Motor Division that they wanted to establish with its car buyers. Now, the word Fiero means very proud in Italian and wild, fierce, or ferocious in Spanish. Now, there were alternative names considered for the car, uh, Sprint, uh, P3000, Pegasus, Sunbird, and of course, uh, Firebird XP. Now, the Fiero 2M4, which is two-seat mid-engine four-cylinder, was on Car and Driver Magazine's 10 best list for 1984. Available engines were the inline four 2.5 liter and the V6 2.8, along with a three-speed automatic, a four-speed manual, and two five-speed manual transmissions. A total of 370,168 Fieros were produced over a relatively short production run of just five years. Today, we're gonna to meet several Pontiac Fiero owners, and they're gonna tell you about their love for these very special cars. Hey folks, I'm Rob. And I'm Nathan. And I'm Jim. And we are two guys in a fire ride. truck. And a fire truck and a ride. And who else? Minnesota Fieros forever. And we are here in beautiful uh, Idle Ridge in Salt Rapids, Minnesota. And say, but uh, we're gonna take a look and talk to these folks here with their beautiful Fieros. But before we do, if you'd like to keep up with all the new cars, trucks, and SUVs, and you like cool collector stories, take a minute to hit that subscribe button down below and hit that bell notification at the top so you never miss a video. So what do you say, folks? Let's, Let's go for a ride! I'm Jeff. This is my 85 Fiero SE 2M6. Um, I kind of always wanted Fiero since I saw him when I was a kid, I guess, and I was shopping. This is same year as I am, had the same uh, speedometer goes to 85, had 85,000 miles on it, and I figured it kind of had to be. I couldn't, couldn't turn that one down, just basically shined it up since I've had it. But just enjoying it. Hi, I'm Shannon. This is my 88 Formula. Um, got into Fieros because of my husband. Stay for the Fiero community and what great people there are in it. I'm Cindy, this is my Silver Fiero. <laughs> That's what, really all I know. And what year? Why do you like Fieros? Um, 86. <laughs> it's an 86. I hear it's an 86. It's an 86. <laughs> I have to confess I'm in the Fieros because my husband bought it for me. Okay, well that's a good reason. And I like it. I like the group. The group awesome. is great. I'm Jay. This is my 86 Fiero GT Fastback. Um, and I'm into Fieros because they're a timeless design. 
My name is Chris. This is my 1986 Pontiac Fiero GT Franken car because it's built out of every year Fiero made plus some non Fiero parts. So uh, are you are you kind of like that uh, old Johnny Cash song where he was building a 59, 50, 60, 61, 62, 63 Cadillac? Pretty close. It's got an 84 and 85 mixed interior. It's got a motor from a 95 Camaro. Uh, it has Grand Am uh, brake parts from an 88 Grand Am. Uh, I have custom headlights, polyurethane front and rear suspension bushings. It'll never be pretty, but it'll always go around corners fast. I love Fieros. Uh, my father got me into them with his 84 Fiero that we blew the motor up in and then built a Super Duty four cylinder for. And uh, that was, uh, that kindled my, my spark. Hi, I'm Ernie. This is my 1986 Pontiac Fiero GT. I got into Fieros, well, I don't know, I was like 24 when they first came out, and I thought they were really cool. They were like mid-engine, like a race car, and I really wanted one. And so eventually I went out on YouTube, and I'd seen somebody had bought a V8 Fiero, and I said, huh, off of eBay, and cheap. So I, I went looking on eBay, and sure enough, I could find, I found this in California uh, with a V8 conversion, and didn't really honestly know that much about Fieros. I just wanted one. And playing with it. And here it is. And here it is. Hi, my name is Rob Bartlett. I'm the uh, president of the Minnesota Fieros Forever Car Club. I've been into Fieros, uh, let's see, my dad got his first one about 1989. He bought his second car in 1991, which is this car. It's a 1988 Fiero GT. Uh, it's rare because it's the last factory installed T-top. Uh, it was actually installed in 1993 in uh, Pontiac, Michigan. Um, I've been running the club for quite a while. I've been involved in the club since I was a kid. First car I got was uh, an 84 SE back in 1995. And then I uh, got an 87 GT after that that I still have and is my project. Hi folks, I'm Nathan with Two Guys in a Ride and, and today we're out here at Idle Ridge and I'm with Andrew and I want to talk to Andrew about this the, this Fiero because it is, first of all, an early production model. Yep, number 6441 out of 138,000, I think. And it was a barn find. Yep, it's that for 21 years. 21 years. It only has 46,000 miles. 46, miles on it. And it is stock. Completely. So it's got the original engine. The, I mean, it's all original. So if you want a stock Fiero from, this was a 84. 84. Yep. This would be what it would look like. Well, except for the rims are from an 86 because the original rims needed to be resurfaced due okay. to corrosion, but yeah. But the body now, the engine and in the, uh, everything else is original. Correct. And Andrew was kind enough or brave enough, maybe I should say, to let me take a drive in this. And it was, uh, it's amazing for the small engine that it has, um, that it, um, it drove as fast, as quick as it did, it was nimble. Um, and it's interesting enough, you know, Corvette's coming out this year with a brand new mid-engine car. Here was the first one. So, um, Andrew, tell us a little bit, uh, how did you find this? We mentioned it was a barn find. Uh, so a friend of mine who was big into Fieros, um, he um, <coughs> he bought this from a, a lady originally before I did, but he didn't title it in his name or anything. So technically, I'm the second owner. Okay. So the previous owner passed away due to a heart attack, and her his wife didn't have the heart to sell it. So it sat in a garage for since 1991, and that's when I got it. Um, it was his daily driver, golf course, scoot around kind of thing. And it took some work, um, but I, I, I love the thing. It's, it's a very, the very first low mileage Fiero I've ever owned. It needs so, a paint job, but yeah. So this is not the first Fiero you've owned? No, I've had an 84, another 84, an 86, and an 88, all four cylinders. And now I just bought an 85 GT, my very first GT. Oh, so. with, the, with the little bigger Yeah, with the V6 and a four-speed saw. So oh, nice. That. But, nice. Um, but there's something about a four-cylinder and a four-speed, they're just peppy. They're not a little too much. They're, in my opinion, just about right. And so that is... Four-cylinder? Yeah, 2.5 Iron Duke. 90 Whoa. horsepower. 90? I can't believe we're out driving on 90 horsepower. Right. My boat has more than that. <laughs> but all original. All wow. Original. 
and that's clean too. You, it, 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 the guy that bought it from the barn, did he do anything to it other than wash it off? No, no, this is how it wow. was when I got it. Boy, clean. I mean, really, honestly, it looks like an engine should after 46,000 miles. It should look clean. It should look. But, you know, when you're talking how many years later. Right. That, that's just hard. That's just so cool. It's a true time capsule. It, it is. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. Well, Andrew, thank you so much for sharing this, uh, your time with us and your story on this beautiful uh, Fiero. All right. Thanks. All right, so now I'm here with Chris, and uh, Chris has, uh, what year is it yours again? 1988. It's an 88, but now this one has had quite a few modifications on it. So yes. it's not original. So Chris, tell us, um, well, let's just start with the outside. What have you done with the outside? It's a beautiful color. Well, the, the outside is a uh, vinyl wrap. Okay, it's a, wow. It's a 3M1080 vinyl, so it's a good quality automotive vinyl. And, did you um, did you do it yourself? Did you have no, it professionally done? No, I had, a, done? I had a, a friend of mine that owns a business okay. uh, do it for me. This is actually, he did his Fiero, he did his roommate's Fiero. Each time he said he would never do another one. And then I talked him into doing mine, so he's done three of them. So wow. He's got about 40 hours into the wrap. You know, just the, it's, it's the, just just beautiful. the, the, front, I mean, it's the just... front bumper alone is about 10 pieces of vinyl. The rear bumper is about 10 pieces of vinyl because of all the convoluted curves. And right, and right. And, you know, you know. That's just... Boy, that's, yep. look, that's a sharp look. Yep. Um, now, on the inside, yep. you have done something really interesting, and uh, maybe in a minute we'll get a shot of that, but you created some dashboard parts uh, that were brought down by the shifter. Yeah, yeah. Tell us how you did that. Well, they're, they're all 3D printed. I, I kind of picked up on uh, 3D printing a few years ago. I bought my first little printer and learned kind of self-taught on CAD software um, on YouTube. There's yep. tons of videos on YouTube oh, on yes. how to do CAD. So just design my own parts and, and print them out, and there you go. It works out for customizing. You, you're you're the, honestly the first guy I've met, first well, first car person I met that's 3D printed parts for their cars. I'm sure they're out there, but I didn't think that's really cool. Yeah. Now, let's walk to the back and tell us a little bit about the engine. Okay. Uh, and I know you also put a modified dashboard in your car. Yep, yep. I like to use as many different manufacturers as I can. Okay. So. Oh yeah, this is not your standard Fiero no, no. engine. This is a, a, a high output 3.5 liter Chrysler engine from a 2003 uh, uh, 300M LH car. It's like the the uh, Concord. Um, okay. A bunch of yeah. different ones. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. It's the in that in that position. It's a front wheel front wheel drive longitudinal front engine car. So basically, I just took everything from the front, yeah, yeah. Just moved it to the back, and made a custom cradle, a custom wiring harness, and everything to make it run. And so, you also have a custom axle in there. Yeah, the the axles because it's a Chrysler sitting in a Pontiac. You okay. know, I had to have custom axles made to make it all work. So, so if I were to ask you, what is one of the best things about owning a, uh, this particular car, this Fiero? What would you say? Uh, it's the only one in existence. And my last question is, why a Fiero? Um, Could have well, a lot you, of other cars. You know, I, years ago when I was in school to be an auto mechanic, um, they would always open up. Once we had to learn something, then they would bring in, you know, teachers, students would come and have your cars worked on for free, and we would right. work on the cars. And one of the teachers had an 85 Pontiac Fiero GT with a six cylinder and a, and a five speed in it, and we put a clutch in it. And then one day when the teacher was off, but we had class, we all took turns test driving this other guy's car, and we all took out and beat on his car for yeah. a while. And it was a pretty quick car, and when I wanted to get, you know, a project car for my own, I figured, well, you know, Let's start with that. Why not, why not a Fiero? I've, I've worked on them, and they're fun, and they're quick, and so that's kind of where it started. Uh, well, Chris, thank you so much for taking the time to share with us a little bit about your Appreciate awesome that. car. Looks beautiful. I love what you had done. Thank you. Best Appreciate of luck that. in the future with modifying great, it. Great, Thank you. Wherever you want to go. All right, so uh, moving on, we, we, we've gone just next door to that beautiful orange uh, Fiero to the yellow one, and that is owned by none other than Peg. Now, Peg, 
uh, happens to know, Chris, um, these cars park together in the garage. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> there you go. Um, but this is uh, this is a uh, 1988. 1988. So it was the last year that uh, the Fiera was made. Right. Uh, we saw the red one earlier. That was a much earlier production, and it was original. This one also is original. Correct. It's pretty much stock. Yep. It is a stock. Yep, yep it's stock. a stock coupe. Okay, so tell us tell us a little bit uh, about this car. You know, it's last pretty year production. What was special about it? Uh, well, it was different. 1988 was the only year for yellow. Oh, uh, they didn't make yellow in any other any any other year. Okay. So, and this car when I bought it only had seventy three thousand miles on it, so it was a low mile all original car. Um, it needed some help. It hadn't been, it hadn't had a very good life. Okay. It was, uh, it's a Minnesota car, so it's got rust. It had rust and had, you know, uh, transmission was bad and the brake lines were rusty and. So it, it, I brought it home and we did a heck of a lot of work to it and ended up almost completely taking it all apart to fix the rust. That's, that's what I'm going to say. Now, uh, is what, had you actually cut part of the frame or had you... Yeah, the, the whole Because you took the, this whole thing, I mean, it was down whole, to frame. The whole back half of the car was taken apart. Okay. Or t all the body panels taken off to expose the frame and then the rusty parts are cut out and then I had to make new patch panels for everything. Okay. So the trunk and the... The big common area is the trunk corners and the frame rails rust out because okay. the salt gets up in there sure. and it can't get back out again. Okay. So, um, and because it's a low production car, nobody makes panels for them. You can't go to Keystone or Certifit or anything like that and buy right. replacement parts because nobody makes them. So the only way to fix them is to make your own. So oh, that's wow. what I ended up doing. And there was a, a, a shoulder injury and, and rotator cuff surgery in there too. So the project took a couple of years. I'm going to go turn my lights on. Um, <laughs> To finish. Yeah, 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 yeah. Please put yeah. your headlights on. These, these are, are so cool. cool these yeah. headlights. Yeah. And these are these were made by a, a member on the Fiero Forum. They're a, a, a low-profile bucket, and they use a 90 millimeter tele, tele halogen light. So they're. Uh, I like those. Instead of the big square. <laughs> okay, I got to chime in here, folks. Sorry, I'm running the camera, but I got to chime in. But when you pop the headlights open, the whole car is just smiling at me now. <laughs> yep. yep. <laughs> it's like, hi, want to go play? Yep. <laughs> That's just, I, I hadn't realized that the lights on the Fieras were so customizable because you've got, there's at least three or four different types of lights here yep. in, the, yep. in the club. And, and, the, and the goal is just to get something that when you're driving it at night, you can see more than 20 feet down the road. Yes. You know, and these, the, the hella halogens, the, the projectors, so you can see yeah. a long way long uh, down, and then with the brights on, you can kind of set so all four of them plan. So if there's a deer in the ditch, a quarter mile down the road, you're going <laughs> to see, see it. it. Yeah, yeah. So um, it, it's definitely. Can we pop the hood? Um, now we talked about this being a, a, a mid-engine car, yeah. and uh, so you can kind of see up here that, that there is no engine. You've got the headlights, the radiator, you've got part of your AC, your brake must be your part of your master yep, cylinder. Yep, master cylinder, brake booster, and spare then the, tire. And the spare tire. And there's a there's a, a guy in Illinois uh, that advertises on Penox Fiero Forum that makes the custom covers and does the stitching. So we ordered one with the stitching to match the car. I was gonna say that is the nicest car or, uh, spare tire cover I've ever <laughs> seen. Yep, yep. And the cleanest. Yep, yep. Um, all right, and let's take a step to the back, and if we can pop the, the back here, take a look at the engine on this one, because yep. um, I, I, I don't. when we looked at the 85, that was the 90 horsepower, so in 88, what, had they changed that at all? They were, they didn't change much, they were 98 horsepower, I believe is what the rating okay. was on them. Um, they went with a, a balance shaft in the oil pan itself, to try and smooth the engine out a little bit. Okay. Um, it did, but the problem with that is now it sounds like a sewing machine when it runs because <laughs> because they get noisy after right. a while. And being that it was a limited production, nobody makes parts for it. So you can't get any parts except for used parts, and the used parts are worn. So okay. you know that's why a lot of these engines get swapped out over time, is because they just you know you can't get really can't get parts for them. They're, they're low power. You know, they don't so want to do a lot of it, like so I said before, some of your own manufacturing right. or find another one and take the part out. Right, yeah, you have to find another one that that is quiet, which is really hard to find now because yeah. 30 years later, everything has got about the same amount or, or more wear than what you've already got. Yeah. So, so uh, Peg, since this is actually your, though, your driver, um, 
what's your favorite thing about this car? Or, or why did you get a fear? Oh, I know I know. Chris had one. Well, Chris had um, one. Chris got me into it, but it's more so getting into the Fiero family. It okay. literally is just a family, and we keep growing, and that's the best part of it all, you know? And, and, and this was, uh, I found it, and I bought it for our anniversary. And it was a surprise. It was an anniversary present. Oh, it was a surprise, yeah. nice. So, yeah, yep. yeah. Came nice. home on a trailer, and I got a little bit happy. <laughs> ah, beautiful story. Yeah. Well, Peggy and Chris, thank, thank you, you so much for yep. sharing your stories on both of your cars. Thank right? you. All right. All right. And so now we're moving on to the awesome green machine. Wow, this is Jason's. And uh, Jason, tell us what, what year is this? It's an '87. And it is a GT. This is a GT. And what have you what have you done to it? Because I don't believe uh, Fiero had this color in the. Uh, custom you know, ordering book they did not there is a running joke that only the green ones catch fire that's why you never see any <laughs> but <laughs> this is non-stock paint it's a house of color blend many layers of paint the, the coolest thing is actually about this car is my wife found it on craigslist and sent it to me in an email and said hey look at this and i said i saw i love the color and i found out it's a v8 and then we went and bought it because i really wanted to buy it but it was a. Uh, it was a, a sort of a neglected old project, leaking many fluids, needed suspension, needed exhaust. Was it actually this color when you bought it? It was this color. Um, I so someone have, already painted it. It did have a professional touch up the front, which had uh, a lot of road rash damage. Okay. But it is a Trans Am V8 and... In here? In this car. So it's an 87 Fiero with an 87 Trans Am engine, 87 Trans Am seats. An 87 um, Sunbird hood scoops to let the heat out. So it's kind of the way I look at it is the way they should have been if they offered a, a V8 mm -hmm. Fiero in 87. This is also oh, this is a little different looking. Not stock. The spare tire would usually be there. It has a front mount battery instead and an amp. Flux capacitor. And a flux capacitor. I like that. Just for fun. <laughs> People get a kick out of that. That has nothing. <laughs> it's just lights, right? It's just a toy. That is the, the amp for a sub that's under the dash. Subwoofer. Oh, a subwoofer. So it does have a function, but I love what they call it the flux. You put that on there. I put the decal on. Yes. <laughs> I love it. So I, what? You have. Oh, that, that around your fan that is an LED strip. And the car does have underglow lights, and that will light up the vents. And you, Out there. You see them at night. Yep. That's been on there for a year, about a year. And you you put that on. Put that on there. Yep. I'd like to see your other car. See what you've done with those. <laughs> All right. So let's move to the back here for a minute. So this seems to be a longer hood to me. It is a factory deck lid. However, these are extended. The so, factory deck lid is original. It's but the this is exactly the original spoiler, but the stands are, I'd say, two and a half inches taller. Oh, so it just it really gives it a different look. And because they angle, it brings the spoiler back a little bit. It just looks longer. Now this, holy schmoly. Yep, so so this is on the, out of an 87 Trans Am. Yes. What about the transmission? The transmission is the Fiero's five-speed Getrag. Okay. And it can take the torque so far. So this is running a cold air induction down to the scoop on the right side for a fresh so air. So functioning, okay, induction, okay. Wow. How, how much uh, horsepower and torque do you get? Well, it's a good question because it's a factory engine. Um, I believe it'd be around 220 horse. Okay. Around 280 torque probably. It's just amazing how what size of an engine you can actually fit in here. Oh yeah. It doesn't look like it would take a V8. There's many ways I to mean, do it. There's a guy named V8 Archie that made some kits to help you put it in. Okay. And this one has a notch in the frame on one side, a, a hole for the water pump on the other side. Well, thank you, Jason, so much for sharing your story and your awesome car. We appreciate it. Thank you. All right, so I am here with Dayton. Dayton has got, now what, uh, I didn't ask you what year it is. This is an 85. Okay, so then we're here with Dayton's 85 Fiero GT. Yep. And he has done some modifications to this. Now you can start by seeing the headlights and you know that's been modified already. And then you look down here towards the uh, turn signals. Yep. And you've got those modified as well. So tell us, where did these come from? So these I actually found on the Facebook marketplace and they are originally for a Jeep. 
And uh, so the size, I, I think it's a five by seven, I believe is the, the square bulb. Yeah. And I just wedged them in there and it has the same plug as the factory Fiero light. Just plugs right in, okay. low beams, high beams, and I can see a lot better than factory. The factory lights in these are the, the halogen bulbs. Halogen, yeah. And it's like holding a candle out the window. You can't see anything. So these, I call it my daytime switch. When I hit high beams, it just lights up everything. You can see everywhere you go. Yeah, you've got a lot of lighting up there. Oh that's, yes. That's oh, it's bright. And then, and now for the bottom turnstiles, did you? So this actually, there's a gentleman, his name is Tom, I believe. And he makes these. I okay. got these pretty recently. They're just kind of clipped in using a, okay. a GM yep. clip. It just, you know, covers up the the turn signal itself. It doesn't really change the color. It still blinks. Okay, but but in the daylight, behind. I mean, it, yeah, it, is, it, it, it gives it a blue nice here. look and everything. Okay, yeah, it's, it's blue, but at nighttime it still shows the amber light. So it's it's really nice and legal. Right. So all right. Yeah. So let's let's move back here a little bit because you also uh, have a very rare mm -hmm. option on the top. Well, not so much an option as much as uh, aftermarket piece. Aftermarket that, piece. Yeah. Um, I believe there's, I want to say there's maybe seven. I, I, it's hard to, it's hard to tell how many of these actually exist. I just okay. know of one other person with one. And it's basically air conditioning. It has a vent, goes all the way through. It replaces the factory sunroof. And um, you put the window down a little bit. Air flows right through, flows right out. Cools your back off. And in a car with, you know, it's 30 years old, AC that doesn't work. It's, right. it's pretty nice, you know, so. Definitely. Nice. I actually got that from Rob, actually. Oh, did you? Yeah, he had it sitting around in his uh, garage, and I just told him I was interested in it because he had to see the modifications on my right. car. I'm not a purist, I guess you could say, so mm -hmm. scoops everywhere. <laughs> I like it. So if we look under here, we will mm -hmm. notice that the actual the sunroof. sunroof is actually under here. Yep, this is the... So you still have it. Yep, I have it in case it and, rains. And you this know. was intended to store that. Yep, this is the actual factory location for the storage of it. So and it just clips right in there, and... This is how you sit it. There's actually this uh, clip right here. Yep. Is what goes if I didn't have that aftermarket that scoop there. Okay. It's just a wind deflector. So huh. it, it works really nice. Yeah, I like that. It's kind of nice you don't have to store it in a garage or anywhere oh, else. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, not having like a right with top. the car. Yep. And the front mount battery really helps me out in the back. Yes. <laughs> um, so uh, moving to the back, mm -hmm. you've, did some, you've done some modifications. Uh, for the motor actually quite a bit yep i cannot so, take credit for most of the work it was done by boom. a close friend of mine his name is wow. logan star and he did a amazing job with this car he everything regasketed everything fit the motor in here made the mounts made the tensioner brackets he's he's a genius honestly and i i couldn't have asked for a better swap it's, that's incredible. So it's that, that, awesome. So tell us what engine it is. So that's a 2004 uh, Series 3 3800 supercharged out of a 2004 Grand Prix GTP. Okay. And this motor has about, I want to say about 130,000 on it. I didn't rebuild it, just right. pulled it out to the, the, some guy's garage and slapped it in, turned the key. And wow. the second day after the swap being done, I drove it from Pennsylvania to Minnesota. Not a single hiccup. Like I said, Logan did an amazing job. And I, wow. it's, it is a fun, fun car. It totally changes the Fiero experience. It puts the power in the car that you yeah. always wish they would have had. Yes. And it, yes. it is, a lot of people will say this is how the Fiero should have came. And I, I do agree. Um, so have you done any other modifications in the inside? I have done a little bit. Um, mostly the pillar gauges I have here are, uh, I have an air fuel ratio just oh, because I, yeah, I like, like that, like to know. And I have the, the boost gauge there. Okay. And if I actually, it has a tip. Now on. is that a fuel boost or is that a, like a turbo boost? That's for the supercharger. Okay. And the, the light should come on now. Oh yeah. Oh, I can see it. Yep. Oh yeah. I the like that. Not too pretty on the inside. You know, I was more, more concerned about driving and not blowing up and right. you know, enjoying the drive more than cosmetically but oh, uh, the, the seats are you know that's why they have seat covers <laughs> that, that, that but you know you, see, you guys have the drives well mm -hmm. you, yeah and then this stuff will come later oh yeah no eventually it's going to get a full restoration or new paint job i love this color it was not factory i don't know where yeah, it was done one. how i just i love the color so i'm going to redo the color okay get rid of the stickers and uh, make it a nice clean restored look to it and uh i honestly can't wait for that well i think you got a beautiful start to it it's just such <laughs> an awesome car dayton thank you so much oh, for absolutely. sharing your car and your time with no us problem, today man. thank you thanks guys
I'm Sounds Rob. Good. I'm Nathan. I'm Jim. Okay. okay. Get you in there. <coughs> Jim, get your name. That's right. Is that right? That's right. Okay. I want to see you get in it, but don't use the tilt wheel. <laughs> you can grab that bottle. That's definitely fair. So that's yeah, the wheels where I usually have it. Okay. Now everybody, you, if you're fans of our <coughs> channel, you know that Nathan's tall, but only when he's laying horizontal. Uh, <laughs> so this we're going to see. This is why I don't need any enemies, because I have... <laughs> it's a good horn on the Fiero. Go ahead. Try to scoot in there. The biggest issue is getting my legs on. Yeah, there. we're gonna need about four guys to pull him out. The good thing you there got a we sunroof, go. we'll just sky hook him out. Where are the keys again? <laughs> Close that hood. 